We've had four zeros. Back. Back to trail today. Good to have a friend. Back on Tiaroa. Yeah, four years ago. Almost to the day, I think. What we worked out. How are we feeling? Um, good. Nostalgia? Uh, I didn't walk this bit, so yeah, a bit of nostalgia I suppose, and a bit of like, oh yeah, this is like some of the section I missed, so yeah. How's it been for you? Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now here's reality. Baby, baby, you are really hurting me. Cause every time you tell me I'm good and bad, I'm doing fine. But nothing ever changes. Yoda. Oh. Oh, hold on. Full of pavlova and adjusted expectations, the Fada Fada pub served as grounds for reunion. Within the peaks of Parongia would lie the first hut of Te Araroa. The next, another 700 kilometers away in the famed Tararuas. So tonight... Ah! 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 What happened? Tonight was just a taste of things to come. Have you seen my son? You just had to do that over and 20 over. 20 beds, 20 bookings. Everybody always asks, have you done that mountain up there? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't need to because I've heard so many stories from everybody else. I feel like I've done it through you. I'm not coming back in mud up to here. <laughs> we didn't even try to get involved. We moved here 2013. The next August of 2014, it was a stormy night. We were here at the stove and we heard a knock on the ranch slider and turned around and there were two wet, drowned, backpackers just distraught and they asked if we had a room for the night and they were from France and they stayed for three days and we wondered why all these people were walking past and we didn't realize we were on the trail from then on they just kept walking up the drive I feel like I'm in a vlog <laughs> but we're surprised that the trail is still just as busy and in fact probably more people are aware of it now in New Zealand than were before because it was mainly the overseas people mm -hmm. and now Kiwis are kind of going well what can we do we can't go overseas but it's like oh hey there's this trail that we've never heard of or that we've heard of and always wanted to do but would have preferred to go overseas but now it's like let's do this let's walk the length of our own country The idea of doing um, Te Araroa has been on my mind for a while. I've had moments where I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely wanting to do this. And then other moments where I've backed off and been like, no, like, you know, I could do something else. I could learn about um, this country in a different way. Um, but I've, I've just kept returning back to, I do actually want to do this. So um, this year seemed like the right time um, with with all the COVID stuff happening. Um, it's sort of a it's sort of a um, a trade off, I guess, not having as many people to meet on the trail, and it's a it's a different it's it's a real like unique year that we're doing it, I reckon, because of that. Um, but at the same time, things are just um, the the quietness is actually quite nice as well. I guess my biggest why for me is um, to understand my um, my relationship to um, Aotearoa as a Pakeha person living here or being born here. Um, my mum's German and my dad, um, I don't, really don't know much about his side and, and how his um, ancestors came and settled here. So I guess through this walk, I do want to um, 
question and, and find out more about that history as well as the now and my relationships to te ao Māori and also my responsibilities as um, for me I understand myself as manuhiri to this land so as, as a guest I think there are a lot of emotions that um, we often don't talk about as Pākehā people and the sort of unsettling of what it means to to, to not be Indigenous here um, and I think I've been learning a lot and seeing the effects of not only like colonization in cultural ways, but also um, the colonization of land. And I think there's probably no more significant way than to learn about that than actually walking through these places and like actually physically like putting your feet on the ground, um, as well as having conversations with people that I would never meet inside my bubble in Wellington. Like, yeah, there's just. I, my mind is being opened every day. Feeling really far away from it all. Being somewhere where I can come out and hike to Araraua where I can go into strangers' homes, where I can meet new people. I'm so grateful, but with it also comes this sense of shame almost. Five hours, which is about three kilometers an hour. It's gonna be a tough trail. That's like Teatro, I lost. On the trail again, there's no one how I'm going to this space with that ball. Don't look back, don't look back. Don't look back. Beautiful. It's New Year's Eve 2020, and I realized that tonight this will be the first time that I ever camp alone. Well, if it isn't the most disappointing thing of my life. Oh my god. My first solo night. Nothing. <sighs> Just... Happy New Year. Seems like a great day to walk about 45.8 or 46. Anyway, some 40 plus kilometer day. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. It's 2021. <gasps> it's a new year. It's a new day. Climb under this tree. Climb over that fence. And that's what we call yeah, TA special. <gasps> trying to go through. I really mean any harm. Okay, so new socks, some blocked up. Now I have about 36 kilometers of road walking. But I can't complain. It should be easy going walking. Just headphones in, audiobook, podcasts to get through the stretch. I think it is safe to say that I will not be taking water under a bridge in the middle of nowhere for granted again. I know you were I can see it in your eyes Oh yeah But there is no need for sorrow Cause I will be with you every second of my life Sometimes it's just Morning, it 
is the 2nd of January 2021 and I am about to start the Timber Trail which is supposedly an incredibly beautiful trail. It is also meant to thunderstorm from about 1pm today so let's see how we go eh? Sometimes you just have those days where you kind of just don't want to walk. It's a beautiful trail today, but I'm having one of those days. You know, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing that's productive? What am I doing that's constructive to for my future? I kind of miss a bed right now and feeling clean. That's just one of those days. It's a passing feeling. Just gotta keep walking. I'm a little unsure how I feel about seeing every single kilometer marker today. We tend to go doing it. This was years in the making. It was always something that we wanted to do. Um, it's a, a luxury glamping campground for um, all the bikers and now also the TA walkers that come on the trail. The weather's not normally like this. <laughs> it's only when you start recording. But it's been pretty amazing. One year in, it's a pretty weird year. It's mainly just Kiwis. There's a few foreign guys coming through, but I think the Kiwis have kind of decided to take this opportunity to come do it. Quite a lot of them will walk in here, realize that there's the potential to hire a bike to ride out. And you're like, oh, I could, I could do a little ride. I mean, it is, it is a bike trail after all, but yeah, it's a bike trail, but still a real nice bush highway for walkers. So, but mm. more and more people are definitely riding it, which mm. is exciting for me. I'm trying to get you guys to come over to the dark side. <laughs> a little tumble. Uh, left arm's a bit sore but I think we're okay. Okay well I think I see where I landed. That doesn't look too good. So it was like the trail gods knew. Knew that the rush of the air from the speed of the bike was tempting. 
like the remnants of my peanut butter squeezing out my last dregs of motivation to walk this trail. I was less than a kilometer from the end on flat ground when I tumbled. Yep, it's another day on the TA. Hey, mate. When I saw the lump protruding from my arm, I swore it was my elbow in the wrong place. And in that moment, I thought it was over. Seriously, dark chocolate and licorice. Cannot beat it. <laughs> Okay, so we met in Fananaki um, way back when. Um, you invited me and a couple hikers to your home. What uh, prompted you to do that? I think that it's a bit like Park Forward. I think it's just something that New Zealanders do is to open up their, their house to people that are, are from different parts, either from New Zealand or, or, or around the world. And sh yeah, share some of the kai that's grown in their garden. Or made in the made in our oven. Yeah, it's just part of friendship. A little video clip. <laughs> so Mark and I had been wanting to walk the Camino, the way in the, from France through to Santiago, yeah. which is a seven hundred eight hundred k walk, and we'd planned and prepared. And after five days, uh, the COVID thing had started to rear its ugly head. Um, uh, but we thought, oh, well, no, there was, you know, nothing to kind of go by that. We'll be fine. We'll be in Spain. It's great. We'll walk. We'd only done five days of a 42-day trip, but they were amazing. And I think the message that comes through for me is accepting what happens, work with what you can change, and let go of what you can't control. And it was in very important that we got home to our, our um, piece of paradise here safely and then see where life took us from there. opportunity to go within and go without um, and and pare life down to the actual what is really important and what isn't. Like it was following me along the fence and then I stopped and it started doing this wiggle dance and I wasn't sure whether it was like a war declaration or a, a mating ritual. <laughs> My name is Kai, I'm from the Netherlands, although I live in Dunedin, New Zealand. And right now we are close to Tongariro. Where are we exactly? In the forest, Tongariro forest? 42 Tures. 42 Tures, yes. that's the one. I've been planning to do this for almost three years. Um, so now the timing was perfect. I don't know, I've always been into hiking and doing the Tereroa. It's sort of the, the pinnacle of hiking in New Zealand, I think. I was really looking forward towards being in nature for multiple days. I thought, oh, all these villages, it's just going to be annoying road walking. But it's actually so nice to meet the locals and talk to them and have them explain um, like the local history a bit and just really connecting with these people that you would otherwise never connect with. G'day. I guess I'm sort of not at a crossroads in my life, that sounds so serious, but finished my studies, not really sure what the next step is. So I reckon it's a good idea to just take some time for yourself and yeah, take some time to think about what you want to do next and what you want to get out of life.
Mount Natahoe was beckoning, but not for me to destroy a ring. She is. Because it wasn't over. It wasn't done. Only 1,200 kilometers into the journey, but a shift in angle and 1,200 kilometers into the journey. It had only just begun. Mm -hmm.